welcome, welcome to today's conversation on shadow work. I'm joined with Chantel Ochoa for today's conversation. We are so excited to dive into shadow work. And I think as always, a brilliant place to start is with our own definitions of what shadow work is, because I think a lot of times the way that it's portrayed in the spiritual community only scratches the surface. And so I'm hoping that today we can kind of take that conversation a little bit deeper. So Chantel, do you want to kick us off by sharing your perspective on shadow work? Yeah, I think shadow work is, um, there is a lot of def definitions out there. There's a lot of ways of looking at it. And so for me, really what it is, is it's the unhealed version of ourself that we're working on that has been traumatized and that we have on some level suppressed, we've hidden it away. We don't like to look at that version of ourselves, but it shows up and it creates blockages and all these things in our life. And when it's time to actually like do the work with it, you almost, it's that elephant in the room. You know, you can't ignore it any longer. And I think a lot of people who come and are awakened is through a trauma response. And that can really start triggering the shadow self to come up to be healed. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think if we take it from a shamanic perspective, you know, one of the things that really traditional views of shamanism look at a shaman as someone who can see in the dark was often how they were described. It's a person that can go into the depths of the world, but also of energy and of spirit and see beyond what's just on the surface. And I think that really applies to shadow work as well, because one of the things that we see in shamanism again and again, is that idea of balance and harmony in all things. And it's very similar to the yin-yang symbol where we see that there's light in the dark and dark in the light. And both are necessary, right? They're both components of our reality here on earth. And I think one of the things that is important to talk about when we start this conversation on shadow work is this idea that the goal of shadow work is not to eliminate your shadow. It's to bring in that ability to acknowledge and balance and accept it. And so instead of trying to cast it out or cut it off or shove it in the closet, we're, we're giving it a space at the table, right? We're welcoming it in and saying, what is it that you have to teach me? And I think that that's one of the beautiful gifts of, sh of, of shadow work is the ability to look at these things that, like you were saying, maybe you don't like, or you didn't want to look at, or that are difficult, or that, you know, aren't the pretty perfect polished parts of yourself, and still be able to say, this has something to teach me. There's a lesson for me here. There's wisdom here. That wound, that crack is where the light is going to come through and where I'm going to be able to understand things in a deeper way. And so when we can take that perspective, shadow work ceases to be this really scary thing. And I think that's something that I see in a lot of my clients is there's almost this fear around shadow work. There's this weight to it that makes it feel like it's this big, long process that's going to be really hard and really painful and really scary. And it's going to take everything out of you. And, you know, we've all had our dark nights of the soul, right? A lot of times that's what wakes us up to spirit and to our path. But I think that the beauty of shadow work is that it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be that heavy. It's intense and it is work, right? That's why it's called shadow work, but it doesn't have to feel like it's draining you because the goal of shadow work is to give you your life force back, to restore that energy flow, to restore your balance and to reunite those pieces of your soul that have started to kind of break away because of the things that we've experienced in this life. And so that's one of the things that I want to put on the table about shadow work right from the beginning is this idea that it isn't this hard, scary, intense thing. It's an opportunity to learn more about ourselves, to gain wisdom, to let the light in, to bring balance into our system so that we can be a whole healed, embodied, bodied spirit having a human experience and that well-rounded experience is what's going to allow us to experience life fully mm -hmm. totally agree with that and it is because when we do have that different perspective with it we get we can move through our shadow work very easily a lot easier than if we were to resist it and to like just fight against it but I do recognize too that a lot of people, that is where a lot of people are. They, because there is that fear that it's hard for them to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that there's going to be 
this peaceful way of working with their shadow self or to because really what is shadow self it is looking at our trauma it's looking at past things that have occurred that have hurt us that's harmed us that's created this split within our our personality our perspective in life you know we go from being safe and innocent like children or people to suddenly now we're not feeling so safe and so innocent and so with that i think a lot of people we tend to not either we get stuck in that we get trapped in that that trauma self that shadow self or we can find as we are finding our way out of it that's where the healed version of ourself can start to really break away with what's happening in the balance of the shadow and the light and so recognizing that too it's it is coming back to yourself it is seeing it and sometimes it's a lot of times it's the forgiveness and it's the working through the trauma that we have because that is what creates this identity of shadow and so when you see that it's like what am i putting out into the world what are people seeing in me that i'm denying in myself what am i not what am i like refusing to be accountable for right and then there's so there's all these different layers but once we can look at ourselves and say you know what i am powerful and i have the i am fully capable of embracing my shadow self healing my shadow self stepping forward in my light stepping forward in this healed version of myself then that's when everything can start to make sense all the puzzle pieces start coming together and it's interesting because yesterday um, I was driving. So two days ago, my husband and I, we went to the mountains. And as I was driving up there, I had this huge epiphany of my own life. And I was just like, it was pretty crazy. And so as a child, I was born to be kind of who I am today, right? But I went through so much trauma that it detoured me in life. And it took me so many experiences to get to, to when I finally said, okay, I surrender. I've learned enough. <laughs> I've traveled enough on this road. And so once that happened, it allowed me to come full circle back to who I believe I was meant to be all along, you know, but it's like, you have to go through this period of self sometimes to really tune in and to know all the degrees of who you are. Because if we're always just in our light, we're never going to know what we're capable on the other side. Because even the shadow self, as toxic as that can sound and be, that's where the warrior sits. That's where, you know, we're able to be in our strength. And that's when we really know what we're capable of. So we have to find that balance in between the two of them and be able to al alchemize the energies together. And, you know, it's so interesting that you have this, this epiphany this weekend, because I was actually, I was on a walk yesterday and there's this really gorgeous magnolia tree that I pass every time I'm on my walk. And I just, I love that tree. And I was thinking about, you know, the analogy of how an entire oak tree grows out of an acorn, right? And there's that kind of common parable fable, if you will, that says that that, that whole oak tree is, is contained within the acorn. And I was, reflecting on a conversation that I had had with my brother a few months ago where he was asking my perspective on like our evolution as a person. And basically his question was, do you think that we add on to ourselves to become who we are? Or do you think it's like taking away layers of paint so that you can see the fullness of who you are? And for me and from my perspective, I really do go back to that analogy of, of the oak tree contained in an acorn in that, like you're saying, I think that we come into this world exactly who we're meant to be, but it's through that process of alchemy and, and shadow work and difficult situations and maybe trauma and the lessons that we learn that we start to kind of peel back those layers so that we can shine light in the shadows and realize these strengths and these attributes and these characteristics that we wouldn't have discovered otherwise. And I think that that's a really common narrative amongst people who have gone in and done their shadow work is that thought of, I'm grateful for what I went through because it allowed me to be who I am today. And it's that knowingness that had you not had your strength tested, basically, you wouldn't have been able to know how far it, it went. And so even though that entire oak tree is within that acorn, that acorn shell still has to break. And it still has to go through the process of growing and being a sapling and getting used to the weather and acclimatizing to the heat or the cold or whatever it is. And it takes a long time for that oak tree to become what we think of when we think of the mighty oak, even though 
all of that magic and all of that wisdom was contained within the acorn at the start. And so I think it's this really beautiful um, awareness and acceptance of that cycle that we go through as a human being of this understanding that you already have within you everything that you need everything that you're going to be, everything that your soul cried out for when you came into this world and knew what you needed in order to fulfill your highest potential, all of that is already within you. And that's the beauty of shadow work is it teaches us that we don't have to stay stuck. We don't have to stay small. Those circumstances and situations that we experience that taught us that we are less than or not enough or not worthy or undeserving or any of the things, they're just stories. And through the process of shadow work, we can really come into that awareness and that knowing that, like you were saying earlier, I am capable, I am worthy, I am enough to do this work and become that oak tree. It's just in that process of breaking open and shedding our skin that it can feel hard and difficult and painful and all of these things. But once we can keep going, when we can keep evolving and keep expanding and staying connected to that even if it's that tiny, tiny voice in you that says you can do it, there's hope, just keep going. There's a reason that that voice is there because again, all of that greatness, all of that majesty of what that oak tree or you know, you are going to become was there from the beginning. And so that I think is one way that we can shift the narrative of shadow work from being this really difficult, painful process to being this understanding that you are just learning who you truly are. You're learning who you were meant to be and you're learning to open yourself up into acceptance of that, into acceptance of your worth and your enoughness and your value and your strength and your courage and all of these things so that once you can look back, you'll be able to see and you'll be able to hold true to that narrative that we hear so often of, I am grateful. I have come to a point where I can be grateful for what I experienced because it made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. that's a great analogy with the oak tree because we are that mighty oak you know we just play small sometimes (laughs) because shame and blame and all these things come through all these emotions that we process and just recognizing what that is is the power of emotion and why we're feeling it because it's the um the mirror that's being reflected back to allow us to know what is ready to be healed and um traveling grace she was saying how she find has found her gifts from the shadows and i find that is very common as well as a lot of people they find that's when they start emerging their their gifts start emerging from them is when they go through a lot of the trauma because now there's this greater awareness that veil has been dropped right we go through life with these blinders on and i remember that in life when i had these blinders on and when they dropped it was like okay, I get to see a different version of myself, right? Because it wasn't like I was blinded to the world. I was blinded to me. And that was my shadow self because I always thought I had to be this tough, rough kid. And, you know, it was me against the world. And when I was able to embrace, it was my shadow self, almost like the opposite version of it. When I was living my shadow self. So when I embraced my lighter self, my more healed version, that's really when my blinders came off because I could see myself in a different way. And that in itself is amazing too, because a lot of people can just go through life in their shadow version, not realizing that there's actually another space and another platform of themselves that they can learn, they can embrace because we're hardened by life. Life can be extremely difficult and a lot of people feel hardened and they, you know, how we have our barriers up and our strong boundaries and our walls and all these things. And it takes a really strong person to one, break those down or one to come into our life and help help us to soften those up, to see a different perspective. And when we can do that, that's when I think those, our gifts can be presented because we're no longer being blocked. We're no longer shielding our heart in the same way. And we can open that up and say, okay, I'm ready to learn how to trust. Or I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to be happy. You know, even when things aren't perfectly, you know, exactly the way I want them to be, but I can be happy and have gratitude in this moment, knowing that is going to bring a new energy around, but it takes time and learning and the process of patience to see 
okay, if I respond this way, because that's how the universe works, right? With that frequency matches frequency. So if I'm always putting out negative, negative is going to come back. But if I shift that into positive, the positive will come back. And I think that's where I started learning the laws of the universe to say, okay, this is how I can do it. Because I've always been really good at manifesting what I needed for survival. I've always been really good at that. But then when it came to, like I said, myself, that's where I would get tripped up because I always thought, well, in order to be able to be in survival and be a single mom and all these things and raise my kids on my own, I had to be this strong woman. But also not noticing now that is who I needed to be to survive in that moment. But to be able to shift that now is such a wonderful way of being because it's so much easier, <laughs> to be honest, to wake up happier and ready to like just take on the day versus like feeling like, okay, it's just another battle to take on. And I think and I, shadow work, no, go ahead. I just think there's a lot of people that can relate to that and need to see that there is this process that we're, you know, tips and things that we're helping and giving out today that can really go, oh, you know what? Yeah, I can do that. There is this process, but at the end of the day, I can walk this journey as well. Because if you're strong enough to be in your shadow, you are definitely strong enough to be in your light and to be able to process that. And shadow work, it does give us such a good perspective on those universal laws because we walk through in that process of transition. It's almost like there are three stages of shadow work as a whole, right? Shadow work is a daily experience that we'll talk about more in depth in a moment, but that process of shadow work in your life it's almost like we go through these three phases the one where we're at the very beginning right where we are stuck in that mindset we are stuck in contraction and with our limiting beliefs and feeling small and feeling not enough and we don't realize that there's another option or if we do we don't know how to get there we feel like it's unreachable it's out of our grasp and then as we start to do the work, we come into this middle ground where you really do feel like you almost have two sides of yourself. There's the shadow self and the awakened self. And you can be in a situation and you can feel that shadow self flare up and want to be reactive and have those emotions and have this story. And maybe it's an anxiety. For me, my shadow self shows up most as anxiety and as fear. And so for me, when I'm in a situation, I can I can have this moment of feeling that shadow self kind of rise up and say, well, what if this and what if this and, and what if everything goes wrong and what if everybody dies? And like, it just rises up and it's so much. And behind it, there's that still peaceful, constant voice that knows we're okay you're okay. It's just a process. And that's just a story that your mind is telling to keep you safe. And I think that point in the journey, when you are almost sifting into this duality of shadow work, where you have your shadow self and you have your awakened self, I think that's really where people start to feel overwhelmed because there's so much happening in your head. There's so much awareness in that stage. And one of the things that I always tell our students is that Imagine that you're cleaning out a closet, right? Everybody has a closet or a drawer where they just shove everything and it just goes in there. And eventually one day you realize you can't really open it that well because it's just stuffed full, but that means you also can't really close it. And so you're you're cleaning out this closet and you're pulling everything out and you're deciding what needs to get thrown away, what you actually want to keep, you're organizing everything and you're making headway. You know that all you have to do is pull everything out and put it in the pile that it belongs in. And then you turn around and you look at your room and there's stuff everywhere. It's everywhere. No matter how organized it is, it is everywhere. And you're stuck with the knowledge that, oh my gosh, everything that I put in that closet for so many years is now out. And what's lovely about that stage is that everybody knows that when you hit that stage in cleaning, you're on the downhill slope, right? It's just all you have to do is put the stuff back in the closet and it's already organized. It's already in its piles. You just have to put it back in. And it takes a quarter of the time that it took to get it all out and organized. But it's that moment of turning around and going, oh my gosh, there is so much here. And I think it's it's that equivalent that we experience in shadow work when we, we can really look at ourselves in our entirety, the dark and the light, as we're calling it in this, this chat and see, there's so much. There are all of my stories and my anxieties and my griefs and all of these aspects. And 
there's all of this peace and this truth and this wisdom and this love. And I don't know how to reconcile the two. And so when you get to that point, I always like to tell our students that that moment in your journey is such a blessing because it's the moment that you know you've turned the corner. It's that moment when you start to feel like I cannot hold anymore. I can't do anymore. There's too much that you've turned that corner into being able to then start to put things away and to really let go of what you're ready to let go of. Because the moment that you sit there and you realize, like you were saying, I would rather be peaceful. I would rather choose happiness. The moment that you say, I can't do it anymore, is the moment that the flip side of that statement, I can't do it anymore, is this acknowledgement that I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do something different. And even though that's not how that phrase often comes up, right? We don't tell ourselves, yes, this is the moment that I am empowered and I'm going to do it all. We say, I can't do it anymore. And it feels like we're broken and we're downtrodden and we're burdened. But what we're really saying in that moment is, I am now committed to doing it differently. I'm committed to something new and I'm committed to figuring out all of this stuff and where it belongs. And so that moment is the moment that you turn the corner. And so in shadow work, I always like to remind people, especially at the beginning of the journey, that it always gets worse before it gets better, just like cleaning out the closet. It's always going to feel more intense right before it gets so much better. And that light comes through. And I'm always reminded of that Japanese pottery technique where they fill in the cracks of pottery with gold. And it's those moments where you're broken and you're split up, but you're about to come back together and see the light through those cracks and be made into something more beautiful and more expansive than you knew you could be. Even though, like we were saying at the beginning, it's been there from the start. You've just now done the work to bring it all up and organize it in such a way that you can now decide which level of consciousness do I want to play in? And that goes back to what you were saying about those universal laws, this idea that in one level of consciousness, those stories and those anxiety and that grief, they are all true and they can make you small and they can hold you back and they can feel really limiting. And if we shift to a different level of consciousness, that truth and that wisdom and that love and that passion and that value and that worth and that confidence, those are also true. And so the work of shadow work is coming into that awareness of it's really just two different playing fields that we have here. It's two different levels of consciousness that we're working on. And can you let yourself take the leap to say when you start to feel stuck or you start to feel smaller, that anxiety bubbles up to say, I know there's a different option. I don't know quite what it is, right? You don't have to have all the answers at the start, but you can say, I know there's a different option here. I know I can choose differently. And what would that choice look like? And slowly you be complete that transformation to knowing that you can choose this loving, truthful, wise, confident level of consciousness as often as you want to. And that's where shadow work becomes really empowering because it all comes back down to the choice that you make. It takes that power back from whatever traumatic experience you had or whatever person made you feel broken or whatever it was that took your power away. Shadow work is the the pathway of reclaiming that power and realizing that you have that choice. And like Chantel said, it's not necessarily going to be easy, right? It can be hard. It can be intense, but it's a process. And at the end of that process is that ability to know that you have the power to choose. You have the power to be everything that you were meant to be. And it's okay if that process happens, as long as we allow it to continue and not get stuck. I think the, um, the concept, well, the idea of the consciousness, the two consciousness, that is so like pivotal because once we are aware of that, it literally is just that shift. It is just choosing that timeline, that frequency, that way of thinking. And it can seriously be as easy as that. We muddle it all up because we are emotional beings. And so we feel that we have to be attached to the story and the the trauma and this happened to me and all of these things. And that's when we go back to like our archetypes and how are they showing up? But once we can really shift into that level of consciousness that you can see it from the bigger picture and recognize I had to go through that to get to here and whatever, you know, karma laws and things that you're working through are all happening on this version of it. But the other side of that with your consciousness is really just having the awareness. And once you have the awareness, it's really hard to go back. 
And that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of like once you're awakened, you can't go back to sleep. Once you're aware of your conscious level, you can't always go back to that. You have these moments of it where you can feel yourself being tugged and, you know, like having that trigger moment or having this emotion or, you know, feeling sad for the day or whatever it is. But once you have that higher perspective of consciousness of yourself, you can always go back to it. So then it's like, saying, okay, I'm just going to give myself this much time. Today is a self-care day. Today, I'm going to like nurture myself and I'm going to think about the things that I need to think about and process through it. But you know what? Tomorrow is a, a new day. Or you know what? I'm going to give myself an hour or two. And then that's going to be a new, new start for me. And so anytime that we can release it and to say, this is just a new beginning. Every moment is a new beginning. So we can choose to stay stuck in that, or we can choose to start that new beginning. And when we can do that, that's where that conscious level and awareness comes from. And then you see yourself in a whole different way, because then suddenly you realize you do have the strength to do it. And it is okay to go through these emotions and to come out on the other side of that and be like, wow, look at me, <laughs> you know, and give yourself the props that you need and all of that. And, you know, and enjoy the fact that maybe you needed to take a bath or you needed a nap or you needed to vent or whatever you're feeling because that is something that you had to do to process through it, but it does get lighter. And then before you know it, all the things that we used to complain about and bitch and moan about and do all the things, no longer do they hold that that same strength in us. You know, suddenly you're like, oh, I forgot that I used to, that was like, I even had an issue with that because it kind of becomes petty when you start looking at it and you realize that was just like, that bratty side of myself that wanted to, you know, pick a fight or wanted to chew on that for a minute. But then you look at it, you go, you know, yeah, I don't need to do that anymore. And that's that conscious awareness that comes through. And it's, it's pretty amazing to recognize that as in ourselves and in others, because the other part is being able to support others while they're going through theirs and holding space in their, in their shadow work, which is not always an easy thing. We all know as friends or, you know, partners, spouses and everything, when your partner is going through their shadow work, it can be really difficult to hold space and ground and be like, oh, you're just filling your stuff today. <laughs> and I want to be over here and be the light that you need or whatever, you know, it's not always easy. But um, I think that's part of our work, too, because everyone is a mirror to us. So we're also seeing in us what they need to heal is also what we are working on. So very a lot of common ground with people and but, and it's, yeah, it's so difficult <laughs> doing I think the supporting others sometimes and it it is that idea of switching from victimhood into self-empowerment and and another way that we can say that is that radical self-acceptance of exactly what you were saying of you know whether it's on the spectrum of if you need to take a bath or a nap today, let yourself do that because it's part of the process. It's part of what's allowing this to unfold. Or it's on that side of if you had an anxiety come up or an anger come up or whatever it is, and you weren't able to be aware of it until after, that's okay, which brings in that forgiveness that you touched on earlier. But it's this idea of when we step into this space, when we look at those two levels of consciousness, we get to go from being stuck in victimhood and feeling like life is happening to us and we don't have enough power and it's never going to get better and we're stuck. And those really heavy feelings that so many people live with every day. And we all know what that feels like, right? We know what that level of heaviness in life feels like. And it really does when we're in that mindset, it really does feel like we don't have a choice. It can feel like we are stuck, that this is how it is. It's going to be hard. And again, when we're in that space where we have that duality of our shadow self and our awakened self, and we can see it all and it feels so overwhelming, it can also feel like there's too much to be able to work through. There's too much to be able to keep moving forward. And this is where you go back into those little choices, because that's really what shadow work comes down to. It's understanding that it's in our choices every day, every moment that 
allow us to shift from victimhood to empowerment. It's those little choices. It's moment to moment work. Shadow work doesn't happen in the big things, right? It's not like it's going to happen overnight and you're going to wake up the next day and you'll have solved everything. It's moment to moment work. It's when you hear that thought of, oh, I'm such an idiot. You say, no, that's existing on one level of consciousness, but there is another level of consciousness. There's another stream of energy. There's another dimension, another possibility, whatever it is that resonates for you in which I am worthy. I am wise. I am capable. I am intelligent, whatever that is for you. It's when you feel that anxiety coming up instead of feeling like you have to give into it and that it's just going to overwhelm you that you can pause and you can come back to your breath and you can take those three deep breaths and you can ask yourself, where is this coming from? What's it rooted in? What am I actually afraid of here? What's the story that my mind is telling me that is causing me to feel so constricted and so stuck and so small? And what story would I choose instead? How can I shift into a place where I feel safe, where I feel secure, where in this moment, as much as I can, that I feel okay? It's moment to moment work. And in that work, the more we do it, the more we realize that those choices really do have power. Those little things add up to be immense changes in our lives, immense catalysts for power and purpose and passion and motivation. And that is one of the hardest things I find about shadow work, especially at the beginning, is it can feel like it's all of these little steps and you start to feel like, is it even going anywhere? You know, is it even doing anything? It's just, I switched from saying I'm an idiot to saying I'm smart. It doesn't change the fact that I still feel like an idiot in the moment, right? I think that's a really common narrative to hear. And it's just that process of coming back and back and back. There's a reason, you know, that they say a habit takes 28 days to form. It's because it takes a while for us to bring things from the 5D into the 3D. It takes a while for us to rewire those neural networks in our minds. It takes a while to do this work because we are literally remapping our perspective of ourselves and how we fit into the world and what that world is. It's not a small task, but it can be simple. It can be that process of in every moment choosing, how do I want to feel? Can I understand and acknowledge and accept that in this moment I am feeling angry, anxious, grieving, sad, fearful, depressed, whatever it is, can I accept that? Can I offer myself forgiveness for that if needed? right? If there's that element of guilt or self-hate or self-harm that's going into that of, I am such an idiot. I should be over this. I should have healed this by now. I should be doing better. Can we bring in that forgiveness and say, it's okay that I'm feeling this way in this moment. It's okay because this experience, it does exist. It is real in this level of consciousness. And as soon as we bring in that acceptance, as soon as we bring in that moment to say, this is where I'm at right now, we give ourselves enough space to say, and is it where I want to be? Or is there something else? Is there a different path that I could take? Can I help myself to shift into that new level of consciousness where not only is it okay to feel the things that I'm feeling, but it's also okay to choose how I want my life to look. And it's okay to choose the stories that I'm telling myself. And it's okay to choose expansion instead of contraction, to choose to step beyond our trauma or our shadow self and to shine light into those corners so that I can be all that I was meant to be, knowing that I am worthy to be all that I am meant to be, knowing that it's okay if that process means that you do it over and over and over and over again until one day, five years from now, you look back and you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I've come so far. And that's mm -hmm. often how it happens in shadow work is that it's in the hindsight that you realize, you know what, a year ago at this time, I was really struggling with X, Y, Z. And I haven't even thought about that in three months. And yes, those that's... moments are the things that propel you forward because those are when you see it did do something. It was adding up. It is making a difference. Yeah, it is. And language is so important. Language is and how we speak to ourselves and how we... um just in general, how we talk, because if you're always like, I suck, or I'm not good, or, you know, I always fail all this stuff, you're going to create that reality, your body, your mind is going to follow that. So it's really important to catch ourselves in those moments, like you're saying to retrain the brain, because that is really the pivotal point of, of change and growth is to 
catch your own language and how you speak about yourself or how you speak about others, you know, because if you're gossiping a lot about other people or, you know, about the situation, that is still a reflection of yourself. So when it's coming back to catching your phrases, catching how you speak of yourself, that is training the mind that's training your cell body and everything to say, you know, yeah, I am this, I'm not worthy. But then when you start speaking strength into yourself, truth into yourself and awareness, that shifts everything because now I can instead of I can't. It's like when you're always, I'm trying, you're always going to try, you're going to chase try. You know, brain doesn't recognize try as I am. It's like, that's always, you're just going to keep chasing it. You're going to keep trying to get it done, but you never actually accomplish it. Instead of, I am healed. I am working on this. I am doing. And when we can shift just that paradox of our language, it's like, yeah, right on. I can get this done. And so with that, it's knowing where you sit with yourself and the self-confidence that you have. And when we can be in that self-confident space and show the world that I can do it, right? Everybody else will start to see that ripple effect within us. And then that's what makes it easier to also, because I've been watching some of the comments on supporting others in our lives is then we get to be witnessed. And then that ripple effect then starts to affect other people's lives. Because suddenly if you're like, if we're always like this hothead or this no, negative energy in the room kind of thing, people feed off of each other. So whether it's your spouse or it's you, if, if it's your spouse, don't feed into it. Try to recognize where your triggers are, be in your own space, you know, you're holding space for them, but you're really just um, standing in your own firm ground of, I don't want to have this argument, therefore I won't. So let them have their comments, their things, but then you know within yourself, you're able to walk away from that, right? And there are moments where you might have to speak up or whatever, but there is a lot of times where couples in particular get into this habit of this tit for tat back and forth. And one, if as soon as one person stops that, the other one will stop too, because you can't argue with yourself. So it's like, as soon as one changes, the other one will follow. And if that doesn't happen, then a lot of times that's when that contract does come to, you know, people start looking outside of it and like, what are other options or whatever? You start working, you start healing with each other. If you don't, you know, um, well, let me get back up. If you focus on the healing with each other, that's when everything transformation can happen within the relationship. We can't force anybody to grow and change with us. All we can do is be the example of it you know, because we're doing the work for ourselves, And that's where you get into like codependency relationships when it, you're going to stay um, unhealed and you know, like in your toxic self because your partner's toxic. So that's where that darker, like the dark shadow self comes in. And that is when we don't want to, we don't want help. We're not seeking for help or I actually made quite a few like examples of it, but um lack of accountability, refusing help, li radical life changes. I was thinking about that today. And a lot of times with people, when they get introduced to shadow work, create and make radical life changes, like they move or they divorce or they do all these things. And really that's because they're escaping the reality in which they're in, right? And so when we do that, we can create more shadow work. And so to kind of combat that is to recognize where you are so you can take a moment to pause to make the decisions that you're you want to make and to make sure that those are what's good for you in this moment and in your future versus you know what I'm just going to escape I'm going to leave I'm going to divorce and I'm going to do this you know or move to a different state or whatever it is because that happens in a lot of people um the other one is I have is to, oh, when we can actually take accountability for ourselves rather than still blaming others, that's a big one too, because that helps you to shift. Once you can see and re like take accountability, that is a huge moment in yourself. And that, you know, it's like, wow, okay. Cause you, then you really are di deep diving into the things that the trauma you create on others. How are you affecting others? 
And so we always in our shadow self, a lot of times it's, I'm going to blame everybody and everything because it's all external. Everything is everybody else's fault. But when you take it inward, that's when you can say, you know what? No, a lot of this is me. It's how I respond. It's how I speak. It's how I show up. And once we can do that, that's when we can really shift into that awakened version of ourselves. And it's this idea too of, you touched on it earlier, but this idea that when we are fully honoring and authentic to our own shadow work process, we give others permission to do the same. And that's something that, you know, we share with our students all the time is that we're all just looking for somebody to give us permission to feel how we feel, to go through the process that we're going through, to have permission to look bigger, to be expansive, to look for a different future. And we want somebody to tell us, yes, it's okay to do that. Yes, you're worthy to do it. Because again, when we're in this victimhood mindset, when we are stuck in those patterns of everything being external, that also means that any validation we have, any worth we have, any value that we have also has to come from the outside. And that's Mm -hmm. something that is, you know, it's, it's the flip side of that coin of when we blame the world for our experiences. When we say that life did it to us or this person did it to us and we're putting everything outside, we're also putting our worth and our expectations and our value and our beliefs and everything outside of ourselves. And so then we're stuck in this cycle of not trusting anybody, not feeling safe with anybody, not feeling like we're cared for or supported and needing those same people who we don't trust, who we feel like are hurting us, who we feel like weren't there for us when they needed to, to be in charge of how we perceive our own value and our own worth. And so we're stuck in this cycle, constantly waiting for somebody to give us permission to step out of it. And we have to realize that that permission starts with us, you know? And if this conversation needs to be your permission slip where you hear us talking and you say, no, you know what? I can do it. I can walk through grief and anger and anxiety and all of these things that everybody experiences. Whatever your story is, I can walk through them. Take this as your permission slip, but realize that no matter who you hear telling you, yeah, it's okay to go through this process, you are ultimately the one that gives yourself permission to do it. Your brain is the one that switches that belief to say, oh, no, you know what? I am worthy. And maybe that came from the outside, right? Maybe it seems like we gave you permission or somebody outside you gave you permission. But at the end of the day, it's your mind. It's your belief that has switched. And in that process, when you give yourself permission, however that comes about, that's when you start to realize that this healing process is in a lot of ways, a self-centered process, not in a selfish way, not in a way that we're going to ignore everyone else, but in the fact that we realize that everything around us is a mirror for something in ourselves and we are a mirror for someone else. And so when we go through our process of shadow work, it does become a self-reflective practice because we can no longer put the blame or the explanation or the value on other people. We realize that it has to come from ourselves And this was something that I learned from a really young age. And I'll kind of give a story to reflect this back. When my mom was 19, she started going into what she called new age spirituality, but she went down the route of Ouija boards and some of the more dark spiritual practices and had some dark spiritual things happen. She worked through those. They kind of impacted her for a couple of years. And then as an adult, she let those go and shifted into, she's now a member of the Greek Orthodox faith. And she has really found her alignment and her joy there. But when I was 19 is when I really started diving into Reiki and shamanism and all of these things. And to my mom, whose shadow wound was when I was 19, I stepped into new age spirituality and it ruined my life. That was the story that she was telling herself. She saw me at 19 years old and thought she's going to ruin her life. But in that process of me staying true to myself, of knowing and trusting my intuition, of being willing to do my own shadow work and knowing that it was through those processes that I was doing shadow work, right? Reiki helped with my shadow work. Shamanism helped with my shadow work. She was actually doing her own because she got to see me walk the path and realize, no, she's okay. She's fine. And so often when we're doing our own work, because it's not that I went into this process so that my mom could heal. 
I went into this process so that I could heal, so that I could walk my path. And in doing so, in being so authentic and so true to what my intuition and my soul was calling me to do, she was healed also. And that's something that is really beautiful about shadow work is when we can say, this is all a reflection of me and I am a reflection for somebody else. We recognize that healing the world comes from healing ourselves because we're going on our own journey and realizing that every action, every word, every movement, every choice has an impact that stretches far beyond what we can see. And so if we can step into a space where we are aligned and we are in integrity with who we are and who we're being called to be and the work that we're being called to do, when we can give ourselves that permission slip and say, by doing this, there will be impacts far greater than anything I could have imagined. That is when we open up the space for ourselves to heal, for the people around us to heal. And that ties into what you were saying about, you know, partners when they argue. It's this idea that every argument is actually just a hurt that's wanting to be acknowledged. It's somebody's wound that feels like it's not getting witnessed or acknowledged or accepted or valued the way that it wants to be. And so it comes out as anger. It comes out as lashing out. It comes out as this, why can't you see me the way I am? Because we're trying to cover up that wound. We're trying to heal that hurt. And so when we do the shadow work and we come back into this awareness that the only wounds that I can heal are my own, and by doing so, others will have the space and permission to do the same for themselves, it it cuts that tie, right? It cuts off that cycle of tit for tat that you were saying when we can come back and realize their emotions, their feelings, their lashing out, their words, their a reflection of them, right? There's something that's coming from inside them. It's their own wound. And what is it that I can learn from that? What is it that is reflecting back at me something that I need to be healed? And this is, you know, as we come towards the end of this, this is the shadow work, right? If we were to lay it out in a process, and I'd love to hear Chantel's thoughts on this as well, but if we were to lay it out in a process, it's that ability to taking this, let's say we take this example of two partners fighting and they're kind of going back and forth and back and forth. And one partner is saying something really hateful and hard and one partner is kind of coming back. If that partner then decides, you know what, this is the time for shadow work. It starts as a pause. It starts as a self-awareness of, this, my partner said something that hurt me. And you go through those who, what, when, where, how questions. What is it that I'm feeling? Who is it that said that to me, right? In this case, it would be your partner. When do I remember feeling that for the first time? And can I breathe? So we have that awareness of this is what I'm feeling in this moment. His words created this response in me, acceptance. And then we change states. We leave the room, we take three deep breaths, we move our bodies, we shift our physical being so that our energy and our subconscious mind is opened as well. When we change states, change positions, we create space for healing. And it can be as simple as three deep breaths, right? There are all kinds of studies that show that three deep breaths is enough to take us from a fight or flight state into a rest and digest state. And so we change states. We've practiced self-awareness, we change states. And then when the time is right, maybe it's in the middle of this conversation. Maybe you say, hey, we're really activated right now. I'd love to work through and see what we're both feeling. And you change it. You change it from an argument to let's bring our feelings to the table. Let's open this up. Or maybe it's later in your journal by yourself. Whatever it is for you, you find a space to then go through the process of what was triggered? What was poked at? What was the core of that? For me, my main question that I ask myself is what is it that I was actually afraid of? And so you'll find that as you go through shadow work, your mind has what I call its favorite chew toys, these stories that it comes back to, these fears that it comes back to, this wound that it likes to pick at. And you'll learn what the question is for you of when you're feeling triggered, it's actually because you were afraid of something or you were feeling grief or you were feeling unheard or you were feeling something. But you go through that process of what was it that I was feeling and why? Where did it come from? What was the root? Whose voice was it in my head that was perpetuating that feeling? And then you say, okay, is it true? Can I know absolutely 100% that it's true? Or conversely, is that how I want to feel? Is that the story that I want to tell? And if not, what's that second stream of consciousness that I can step into? What would I rather believe? What would I rather understand? What would I rather tell myself in this situation? And how would I rather act next time? 
what would be in alignment with who I truly am. And this is where things like knowing your values or knowing your intuition or knowing what is true to you in this lifetime, it can be so important because you can go back to what action, what choice would have been more in alignment with what I believe, with who I am, with what I value. And you make a note of that for next time. And if it's needed, you go through that process of self-forgiveness of it's okay that I didn't catch it this time, or it's okay that I felt whatever I felt. It's okay that I've had to take this time to process because now I know so much more about myself than I did 30 minutes ago. And I have a tool that I can take with me to create change in the future and to bring it back to myself and to recognize this is where the healing starts. This process that I just went through healed something. It brought up awareness. It gave me an opportunity to learn. It gave me an opportunity for self-forgiveness and it's giving me an opportunity to move forward in that new stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Very good. And you know, the thing when I was thinking or listening to you is also remembering that we can come back to a place of friendship in our relationships. You know, sometimes a lot of times when you go on back and forth again, you know, it's, it's like we step out of the role of being partners and lovers and friends. And it's because now we on some level became enemies or, you know, whatever. And it's really remembering why you fell in love with each other in the first place, why you chose to, you know, move in together and, and to journey life together. And sometimes it's as simple as just saying, Hey, you know what? Let's get back to being friends. What did you do in the beginning that you both enjoyed so much? You know, kind of getting back into date mode, get back into, you know, flirting with each other and doing things like that. Cause that could really break the ice when it comes to with shadow work, but within your own healing. Cause if you feel like you're living with somebody or you're, you have a close friend that you're always going back and forth with, sometimes it's getting back to the basics of it. And once you can do that, you get to see each other for the version that you love, that you fell in love, the person that you fell in love with in the first place. And then you can do also all the things that Isabel is talking about with, you know, definitely taking yourself, removing yourself from a situation is not a negative. A lot of people think, oh, you're just running away. No, sometimes you physically have to remove yourself from the conversation to break it, to like cut that tie, to break it off. And then when you come back, you're in a different mindset. You know, the emotions aren't so heated, right? And then it's like, now we can actually have an open conversation with each other and see how we're feeling. You know, what did that bring up for you? And this is what it brought up for me. And then again, if it starts getting all, you know, activated again, separate, do it again, stepping out, you know? Um, And once you get that pattern going, eventually you don't have to leave as often because then you can say, what is this bringing up? What are you feeling? And then the conversation can start to flow more because one, you're starting to see each other's from as friends again, you know, like, especially with men. Okay. Men are never going to go and bitch at their friends. They're never going to go complain and call them this and call them that. Right. Women, we're more emotional. We're going to go and la 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 la, whatever, you know, but men don't tend, they don't do that. They just suppress everything. So when they can see you as a friend again, then it's like, it brings us common balance, like this equal balance with them, you know, because men and women were just different, masculine and feminine were different. And so when we can bring in that balance through communication, through just, hey, I love you, you know, I want to be your friend today. Can we just get to that simplicity of it? Then a lot of times it's, um, we can bring in the harmony back in the home. And that's really, that's, that is like the epitome of what shadow work is, is when you can take that shadow cell and merge that into the light or the awakened or the healed version of yourself, and then step out of that and say, okay, yes, I still have this, but I don't have to wear that every day, all day long. I don't have to show up like that every day. And so, um, Yeah, there, you know, this is such a big conversation that can go so deep in so many ways, but there is a lot of ways to work through shadow work and a lot of tips and a lot of things. And I was thinking that maybe over the next couple of days, I'll be putting, you know, we can put some things out in the community and some posts and some tips since we weren't able to um, really hit them all today. But then that way they can come back to it as well. I think this is a conversation that can go on for a while. And I did want to add in there that 
you know, just what Chantel said at the end of when you're when you're with your partner and you say, hey, I, I want to be your friend today. I want to be in this loving relationship, recognizing that that is the exact same process that you do if you're by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, that process of coming to yourself and saying, hey, I want to be your friend today. Let's not fight anymore. Let's not have this negative self-talk. Let's not be so focused on the problems, right? Because if we start to see our relationship with ourself the same way that we see our relationship with our partner, our mother, our brother, our kids, whatever it is, our friend, we start to realize how dysfunctional our relationship with ourself can truly be, right? And this idea that if you were in a relationship where the story that you kept coming back to is, oh, you're such an idiot, you're such a failure, you never get anything right, you're always doing it wrong, you should be doing so much better, we would never tolerate that in a relationship with someone else. We would say we are so focused on the problem right now that we're not getting anywhere, but we don't think about that with ourselves. We don't think about the fact that if that's what we keep coming back to, we're problem focused instead of solution focused. And so when you can come to yourself and you can say, today I'm open to choosing differently. I'm open to having a conversation with myself to see what is that hurt that's coming up to be witnessed? Where is it coming from? How am I feeling? Let's have a conversation about it. Let's bring it to the table the same way that you would with a friend or a partner or a parent or a child. What are you feeling? What did that bring up in you? Why is it impacting you so much? Tell me what's happening inside of you so that we can shift from being stuck and focused on the problem into thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for bringing up those feelings. Thank you for bringing up that story. What now? What needs to shift? What happens next? The same way that we would with someone else, can we come into that same kind of relationship with ourselves and go through that process? Because that is shadow work. That ability to say, hey, I'm ready to find a solution. I'm ready to create a more comfortable, loving, safe, peaceful, joyful environment within myself the same way that I would in a relationship. And so like Chantel said, this is an incredibly in-depth conversation that's hard to touch on every aspect over the course of an hour. So if you are listening and you want us to do another episode or you want to join us for some tips and tricks, be sure to join us in the Moon Rising Shamanic Mystics Facebook group where we'll be sharing shadow work tips and tricks and of course having more conversations about how you can bring this into your own life. But for now, we hope that this episode has brought you some insight and inspiration and maybe helped to shine light on a corner of your own shadow that you hadn't thought of yet and give you some inspiration and ideas on where to start, knowing that as always, that awareness is the first step to healing. And so thank you as always for listening. If you have more thoughts, if you want more tips on shadow work, or you just have more questions, feel free to join us in the Moon Rising Shamanic Mystics Facebook group so that we can continue the conversation and you can connect to the other amazing members of that community and keep this energy flowing and moving forward. And until next time, may you awaken to the whispers of wisdom rising from within. 